a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank Part 44, riveting the front smoke box ring to the smoke box barrel and cleaning up the other wheels. The holes are drilled all the way through the front ring, so now it's time to rivet. The normal way to rivet for me is to put a rivet snap in the vice like this, but for this job it's not ideal. There are a couple of good reasons why I'm not going to do it this way. The smoke box ring at the front is stepped inside as you can see here. And because the internal diameter of this smoke box is quite small, there's not much room to swing the hammer. And most of the hammer blows are not hitting the rivet head anyway. Doing it this way is going to be a long and very tedious job. But never mind dear viewer, help is at hand. Find yourself a piece of steel like this and bend the end of it. And clamp it very tightly in the vice jaws in such a position that the smoke box sits on top of the jaws. And here I think you probably get the idea of what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the rivet snap on the outside, but first of all it's very important to position the rivet right in the centre of the piece of steel. Not like this. I'm starting on the underside to see what it's going to be like, and if I make a mess of this it doesn't matter because you can't see it when it's fitted to the engine. Initially, while doing this riveting job, I'm only putting enough pressure on the rivet head to make it seat in the hole. And once I have rivets all the way around the edge of the smoke box, I will go around the job again and tighten them up by hitting them one more time with the rivet snap. This rivet is about the right length, maybe a fraction long, but watch what happens. The holes at the bottom of this smoke box were the first ones that are drilled and they were a bit too big. But after quite a few hammer blows, the rivet expands into the hole and it's tight. Here I'm going to show you how riveting can go wrong. This rivet is too long. And with the hammer on top of the rivet snap, I'm having to hammer for quite a long time. And very soon you'll see what a mess it is. Please don't write in to tell me that I'm doing it wrong. I do know this. And please remember experts, you are watching a tutorial designed for beginners. The rivet is a thorough mess, so the best thing to do is to remove it using a sharp chisel. I'll come back to this and remove what's left of the rivet in the hole and then re-rivet that particular one. Behind the smoke box door hinge supports, the rivets are quite short and in this case they're fitted with Loctite 603. I'm carrying on with the riveting job working all the way around because as I just mentioned, I'm going to go around it all again to tighten all the rivets, but I do need to let the Loctite 603 cure where they go through into the block that supports the crossbar, and this crossbar allows me to lock the smoke box door very tightly to the smoke box itself. It's actually a simpler job than the way I did it, to simply rivet the crossbar supports to the front smoke box ring on the inside. I just wanted to show a different way of doing it. In this clip you will notice that some of the rivets are working loose, so they're not securely riveted, they were probably a bit short in the first place. Never mind, it's an easy fix and it's a very common problem. It's also now time to remove the rest of the rivet that was left in the hole when I chiselled it off. Normally when I make smart boxes I would use steel, not brass. Brass is a bit soft, it doesn't rust which is a bonus, but the rivet snap will mark the brass very easily as shown here. This was my fault, I did it on purpose, I didn't hold the rivet snap in the right position, it has to be perfectly vertical relative to the rivet. And in this clip I'm doing it again, you can really see how easy it is to get the rivet snap off centre. That's really why I prefer to put the rivets in all the way around and then go around one more time, very carefully tightening up the individual rivets. From where you're looking at the viewpoint, I held the rivet snap towards the left hand side and it's left a mark. Don't forget this is a sympathetic restoration of an existing locomotive and believe me, some of the workmanship on this locomotive is far worse than this. It's time to clean up the other wheel sets. Here I'm grinding away the centre of the axle, which is meant to protrude, but unfortunately someone has drilled random holes all over these things to hold the axle in place into the wheel. My Proxon mini angle grinder fitted with the usual flapper wheel makes short work of the axle. After giving the front of the wheel a rub down with some 100 grit emery cloth, it's time to use some JB Weld to fill it. JB Weld is a two-pack epoxy resin mix. This is 24-hour JB Weld, and it dries very hard and very strong. I'm using a rivet to mark the position of the centre of the axle, because I'm going to re-drill the centres of the wheels using a centre drill, like I showed previously in another video. Once I'd coated both sides of the wheels with the JB Weld as shown, 
I clamped the wheel set in my vise for the JB Weld to cure. This is a centre wheel set and the crank pins were too long for me to keep it level in the painting jig. Besides I still have the front wheel set to do and once again I'm cleaning up the face of the wheel using the angle grinder, fitted with the flapper wheel disc. And then in exactly the same way as with the other wheels, I coated the front of the wheels using JB Weld, making sure that I plugged up the holes where the grub screws are. Then all I needed to do was leave the JB Weld for 24 hours, but unfortunately the outside temperature dropped to minus 2 degrees, which I know is not a lot if you live in Siberia or Canada, but it is in England. And because of the low temperature, 24 hours later, the JB Weld had not fully set. It was so cold that the water that I normally use for quenching silver soldered parts in the outside part of the workshop was frozen solid. My workshop is heated, but only when I'm in there. I was quite concerned about this freezing problem, so I checked the boilers in the workshop to make sure they weren't full of water, and the ones that had water in them were emptied. My large traction engine is OK, that lives in a different place, it's in the garage along with the central heating boiler. The good news is that today is the 1st of January 2021 and it's no longer freezing outside. So for the final time, a very happy new year and stay healthy in 2021. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.